Well, good afternoon, kids. How is everybody doing this fine Friday? I'm going to rant for a minute. I've had one frustrating week. That thing back there is about made me pull out what little hair I have left. As you may have been told, you know, for the last week or so, I've had a little bit of issue with the, the cooling system because, you know, of course, I went from a 2016 to a 2019 frame, which has the larger radiator and has two fans on it. Okay, no big deal. So we just added in a, a second relay and an extra circuit for that particular fan. Not a big deal. Well, those fans wouldn't turn on. And I tested them and everything looked fine. I mean, and then I said, well, I must have made a mistake down inside of the harness that I grafted into. Pulled it all apart. No, no mistakes were made. There was nothing crossed up. After a lot of troubleshooting, it turns out that that second relay that I added, just another Yamaha relay, this one in particular, the coil voltage that pulls in the, uh, the contact, you're supposed to read about mm, in between 50 and 60 ohms on that. This one reads 0.3, which is basically a dead short. So what does that mean? Well, that means that from the ECU that goes to that trigger on the uh, relay itself is, is looking for a ground going into the ECU. As soon as that ECU hits a certain temperature on the sensor, boom, sends it a ground, turns on the relay. So what was happening with this one? Well, it was sending 12 volts into my stage three programmed ALBA racing ECU. Destroyed that particular um, aspect of it. Ugh. So frustrating. So the only way this ECU is going to now work in that machine is if I put a switch on there and turn it on, on or off as far as the, um, the cooling fans. And we're not going to do that. So do I buy a whole nother ECU? No. I already own one. I already have one with the program. So what am I going to do? I'm going to buy the software to uh, flash another one myself. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> All right, enough of me bitching. Everybody, thanks for joining us today. And we're going to swing around and see what questions. Actually, I caught y'all last time and there was nothing I didn't answer. May not have answered everything correctly, but I did give you an answer. But there were some questions that were sent in for this week, and I'm going to swing around and answer those first. Um, user, good grief, that looks like a strange password. Um, hi. <coughs> oh, boy. I had mice to the three wires of my TRX 400 coming from the engine to the re regulator rectifier. Uh, I don't know which wire went which to which now. It doesn't matter at all which one uh, I connect them to. I'm assuming that if they're all putting out 18 volts, it shouldn't matter. Just want to be sure and not damage anything. Thanks in advance. All right, if we're talking about the, the stator wiring that's coming up from um, your, your, well, your stator, uh, there should be three wires. I think that's a three phase. Hell, that just may be a two phase, a single phase on the, uh, the TRX 400. Well, at any rate, if we're talking about the wires that are coming off the windings of your stator, whether there be two or three, no, it doesn't matter which way you connect it because those are actually AC lines coming from there. Now, if you're talking about the wires coming from your regulator rectifier going back into the, uh, the harness, that's important because you've got the stator wires coming in and then you've got your regulated rectifier and polarity important wires coming back out and uh, charging your battery and running the electronics on your machine. So let me, let me reiterate, if it's the wires coming from the stator, whether it be two or three, no, it does not matter um, which connection or which one goes where because it's just AC voltage. Now, if it's the other two, it's very important, <laughs> very important uh, that you get those correct. Uh, 3140 had asked me, uh, how many hours before I need a top end rebuild on my 2016 YFC 450R? According to the Yamaha manual, if memory serves, if you're running this thing on a track as it is intended to do, I think they want you to rebuild it every 15 to 20 hours. How many of us can race at the level of Scott Champion? I mean, come on. <laughs> so I would say run it until you can feel it starting to lose its zip, do a quick compression test, and you can 
probably get away with just another, another set of rings instead of having to constantly replace piston and rings. But hey, if you're operating at this, uh, this high of a level, you go right ahead and rebuild the entire top end every single time. Hopefully you have a good sponsor. I think we're full for right now, so don't ask. <laughs> Josh, Joshua Price had asked me, I have a 2004 GSX-R600. It's been sitting for quite some time. I replaced the battery as I knew it didn't have any power. I put some gas in the tank. Oh, the starter is kicking the engine over and wants to start, but does not. I picked up some starting fluid and gave that a try. It will kick over and start to run, but only for a second, then it stalls. I hear the fuel pump working every time I turn the key. I just don't think it's, uh, I just don't think it's my spark plugs as I've replaced them years ago. Can spark plugs go bad uh, just sitting in an engine? I'm thinking it might not be getting any spark from the coils. Well, I think you've kind of eliminated that problem. I mean, just because you hear, because um, it did, it did try to fire. And just because you're hearing the fuel pump running doesn't mean it's actually doing anything. And if it's for quite some time being a number of years, well, chances are any fuel that was sitting in the bottom of that tank, in particular, any fuel that got pulled into that fuel pump and it was just sitting there, it's probably turned into syrup. So the motor's sitting there spinning, but everything else is just goo at, at this point, especially if it's been several years. So um, you're going to need to do a better job of cleaning out the fuel system. And when I say the fuel system, it's going to be everything. The, the fuel tank, the fuel, fuel filter itself, the fuel pump, and then probably your fuel injectors as well. And Motion Probe makes a nice little com compact kit that will trigger the, uh, the, the, the uh, injectors, and you can just spray regular carb cleaner straight through them. And I'm pretty sure we have a video that shows you how to do that. Michael Greenier have asked, had asked me, hey, John, I have a 2007 Yamaha Grizzly. I changed the front bearings on both sides and ball joints on one side. Now the rims are rubbing on the top arm. <laughs> I can't figure out why. Any thoughts? It's, you must have ordered something incorrectly if it changed the geometry that much. Um, you didn't say where it was rubbing. It was rubbing on the top arm. So you're telling me the tire is tilted in more now? That makes me wonder. <sighs> you didn't reverse them, did you? <laughs> I'm not even sure that's even possible, but if you did both sides at the same time, did you accidentally swap them? I've got a 700 here. Um, maybe I'll look at it later and see if that's even even possible. But obviously, something mechanically, if something was mechanically done incorrectly, so pull it apart and let's try again. And just be very careful uh, to uh, it, whenever you start a project, you need to do before and after photos just where you can get back to a starting point. Because hey, sometimes things go wrong. <laughs> Pictures wouldn't have helped that, but yeah. It happens to all of us. All right. One more, then we'll go to the live stuff. Craig West. I haven't rode, ridden. Come on, people. I have not ridden my 2011 GSXR 1000 in about seven years. Oh, boy. It ran fine then. <laughs> How many times have we heard that? It ran great when parked. <laughs> Should I worry about the engine being damaged upon startup? Thank you, sir. Seven years sitting still, unless somebody drained all the fuel out of it, you're you're going to have a totally messed up fuel system. Um, cleaning it will almost be impossible. You're going to end up replacing most of it. And that most of it being your hoses, the pump, the pickups, the filters, and more than likely the injector. Seven years is a long time for a unit to sit, even though it is an injection system, not open to outside air. It is still going to gum up eventually. So. Yes, that is going to be a mess to uh, undo. All right, let's see what all we have going on the live side today. Oh, boy, good ones. KTT was watching your R6 engine rebuild. Great work. When, I re when refreshing an engine for rebuilding, is it best to use oil or assembly lube? If you know you're going to start the engine up, Almost immediately when you finish it, you can get away with just oil. The reason for the assembly lube is, um, well, one, 
it's great for startup. Two, it doesn't go anywhere. So with oil, even though you oil everything down, eventually it's going to drain down to the bottom of the engine and potentially have a dry start. So uh, especially uh, on one that you know you're not going to start up, you know, immediately, you want to use the assembly loop. Michaela, John, working on an 07 GSX-R750. Uh, got to do fork seals. I'm using your video for the 07 1000 as a reference. Well, good. I'm not sure everything's going to line up exactly in between the, those two designs, but it should get you pointed in the right direction. Good luck on that one, and let me know how it goes. Kerm, how's it going, Kerm? John, my good man, I'm looking at a beta... 300 RR tomorrow. Have you had any dealings with beta? Beta is a uh, trials bike, isn't it? But if I, either way, I have not ever slung a leg over one before. Um, Michaela Gerard, what do I do with the compression settings before disassembly? If I remember correctly, you're supposed to have them all the way out for compression and rebound. So all the way out, needles all the way retracted. Chris R. How's it going, Chris? You've been tearing up the dunes? I hope so. Hello, JT. Well, no noticeable change in power with the spark arresters installed over Father's Day at the dunes. Well, good. I had a feeling you were back out there. But I do have a tuning question for regarding uh, needle position. What is lean versus rich since, um, symptoms during a quarter to three quarter throttle position? Can it be corrected by changing the pilot and or main jet, or does it have to be done with the clip position? Good question. Here's the real trick. Um, you can experience the same, con the same condition with either one, lean or um, going too rich. It, it's an incorrect mixture that it calls it to, to bog. Either you're sending too much fuel or you're sending too much air. And the trick is to get that to aim in the middle. As far as determining which one's which, well, that's when you start doing plug reads since you don't have a, uh, a wide band O2 sensor in there. I usually start with the pilot jet just to make sure that that won't clear it up. But um, in the meat of the throttle where you're talking about in between a quarter and three quarter, that's probably going to be uh, moving the clip on the main jet up or down. And if that still doesn't do it, that's when you go and change out the main jet and then start the procedure over again as far as where the needle's going to seat. So there you go. Harry Steed, how's it going, Harry? 2007 Honda TRX 450ER is blowing oil out of the breather tube excessively while riding is the oil a bad thing. Yeah, what you're getting by is... Uh, what you're getting is too much blow by on your piston rings and it's over pressurizing the crankcase and that air has got to go somewhere. Sometimes it has oil with it because we're driving machines that bounce around a lot and it's spitting it into your, your air cleaner or your air box. So it may be time to do at least uh, rings on that one, if not piston and rings. Because on the 450R, I mean, that cylinder is pretty tough. And usually you can run two to three piston and ring changes before you have to replace the cylinder itself. But yep, I think it's time to go uh, go into your top end, Harry. Chris Sar, the machine kept popping and seemed like it was missing during these position during this position and would go away during wide open throttle. Huh. Well, that leads me more toward the pilot then if, if it's uh, able to climb out of it on top. Let me know what you find. Mm. Amico Garman, what's a good lithium batter, battery for the 2021 high lifter? I don't know of a specific um, specific one. But what are those? Uh, the gravity batteries. Uh, I can't remember. I think that's the manufacturer. Gravity, I think they have a full line um, of different batteries, and you just have to find one that will, will work in the, uh, in the high lifter or is big enough for the Polaris. <laughs> I'm getting hit on again. Oh, where'd you go? Grammy Sweets. Hey there, good looking. Hope you're having a great Friday. I've missed seeing you at the end of my week. Tell Gail that she's one lucky lady. Well, I will. She's probably, I know she's not working today, so she may be listening today. 
How's it going, Gail? Don't worry. Grammy Sweets is not going to take you away from me. Or take me away from you. There we go. <laughs> oh, Chris, by the way, sorry. No vid to share with you this time while I was there. Mm, I had too much fun holding on for dear life. Well, that's the way it ought to be. That's the way it should be, Chris. Come on. Paul, how's it going, Paul? We still need to get you to the studio, especially, well, we'll be moving out of this one in less than uh, six months, but you need to you may, need to make a trip down here. Maybe pull up a chair next to me on Friday and help me answer some questions. You up for that? Doing a road trip? Come on. Like to meet you in person. But anyway, Paul saying happy Friday, and I'm finally done with all the AT ATVs yippee for me. Now I'm swamped with a few tractors and pressure washers. No bikes, no, no bike questions today. Sorry. We'll see. You've got time. Come on down. Yeah, you're northwest of me, if I remember correctly. Rider R6, can we get a coupon code, please? Uh -huh. I don't know, guys. Should we uh, offer uh, Rider R6 some type of coupon? Why don't you reach out to us, uh, Rider, on uh, one of our instant messaging systems, whether it be on Facebook or, uh, Facebook or Instagram. Let's see if we can set you up. That's up to the multimedia team. I'm just the monkey with the wrench back in the studio. But hey, it never hurts to ask. All right, quit, quit, quit. ZAS. Hi, guy, gays. <laughs> Hello, master. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. Chris R., I hung my head during your answer. <laughs> well, you shouldn't hang your head. Come on, man. Um, ZAS, I made new rear bushings, lengthened it between the gearbox and the wheel since the gearbox bearing was clamped and the load was on. The wheel bearings were hanging in the air, did not work at all. Okay, so you're telling me that you're, you've got a rear wheel, evidently, and you had new bushings put in it. But when you tighten everything down, it doesn't want to turn. Am I reading that correct? And the wheel bearings hanging in there that did not work at all. This is for your information if you encounter someone with such a problem. Now, I was going to continue if... If you're putting together a wheel and you're tightening it down, then it doesn't want to spin. That usually indicates that there's a missing spacer in between the two outer bearings or the housing is damaged and it's letting it clamp in too far. But hey, thanks for that information. Amico said, thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, it's a, uh, a 1800 VTX. Okay, very good. Janono 088 2016 Honda TRX 500 FM2 four wheel drive manual. Okay. Two. So that has power steering, doesn't it? It's been a while since I've been thinking about exact model numbers. <laughs> Reset the steering, but the light still doesn't go out. What's the best way forward? Will the EPS unit be replaced or is there a process of elimination to determine this? All right, so you're just trying to do a reset and it's still giving you an error. Though the EPS units, they're more or less completely contained and once they start having issues, yes, you will probably have to replace the entire unit. Um, there are steps for that, Genono 088, but I don't remember off the top of my head. I'll tell you what I will do is, Hank, if you would make a, mint or make a note of um, 088's question, I'll bring up the manual and then uh, see if I can walk you through it. If not, I can always send it out as a PDF to you if it turns out to be a long diagnostic process. It's been, been a little while since I had to uh, troubleshoot a uh, one of the EPS systems on a uh, on a Honda, but that doesn't mean we can't go back and figure it out again. But most of the time. It did involve. All right, we've troubleshoot it and they would always point back to the unit itself. So chances are that's what it's going to be, but we'll approach this as if it might not be because yours is a 16. That's going to be out of warranty, so that's going to be a little expensive. Thick Toast. Did Yamaha always have 18 different crank bearing sizes in their models? Uh, our case tolerances, that varied. 
they're covering one extreme to the other. But uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you um, just about all the Yamaha engines I've built, their tolerances are actually very good. And that there's a little bit of overkill, but you could just about always, you could just throw a set of uh, um, greens or blues, in, or, or is it brown? Greens or browns in a case, because those are in the middle, and it, it would be fine, <laughs> to, honestly. But they are so particular. They want it to be so accurate. That's why they have that, uh, that wide of a variation. And if, honestly, it's not really not that big of a variation from their thinnest to their thickest. But they're, they're just really wanting to dial things out and dial things in perfectly. Now, if they only sourced better relays. It's going to be a sore subject for me for a while. <laughs> All right, guys. Did I catch up with you again? I believe that I did. And it looks like the only one that I'm going to have to go back and research is the, uh, the Honda 500. Well, is that all we got for today? You're going to let me hang it up? Oh, Y Z 600 r specifically. I know it's across the board thick. I mean, all uh, they basically have that same range for for all of their bear, bearing guides, and that goes for their uh, marine side as well. I've actually rebuilt a couple of those engines. Um, what was one I did from the top to the bottom? It was a Yamaha F two twenty five. If you ever want to see that, go to our boats.net channel. And uh, I think there's like seven or eight videos of uh, Evan and I going through that one. He was my videographer on the Marine side for a while. Any vi videographers out there looking for a job, why don't you come see us at Outdoor Network and apply for a position? I think we've got one posted because we need to get that channel going again. All right, one more. Kung Fu Kenny. Um, Opinion on buying a 2006 GSXR 1000K6 low mileage around 6K? Oh, absolutely. I, mean, I, would, I wouldn't have to think twice about that if it's in good shape. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't hold back on that one one bit. Just uh, do your due diligence, even though it's low mileage. Make sure everything's good to go and it's been serviced as it should be. But with only 6K, as long as, long as the oil was changed at least once, I think you're going to be fine. Paul said, uh, road trip sounds fun, John. Well, shoot, let's hook up and see if we can get you to come up here for a Friday. Lunch will be on us. How's that? Kung Fu Kenny, love your content, sir. Well, thank you. Uh, we like hearing that. All right, kids, I'm going to call it a day and uh, head to the barn, so to speak. Bar, barn, one or the other. <laughs> Well, everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will see you again this coming up Friday at 3. Uh, Y'all take care, and thanks for uh, shopping here with us at Partzilla and spending a little time with us today. Later.